How's it going people? Welcome back to the channel and today I'm going to be going through three main things. So first of all I wanted to tell you about a new series that I want to start. I alluded to it on Instagram about a month ago but I finally kind of come to a conclusion on what I want to do and it really really needs you guys to be involved. Second of all I'm going to quickly go through some Q&A questions that you guys are giving me on Instagram and on YouTube so stay tuned for those. And then finally if you drive a VW Polo 9N or 9N3 and you have a five door then stay tuned because I've got a little giveaway for you if you're very lucky. There will be a topic of the week this week, but wait for that as it's going to come up in the first section. And yeah, it's basically an admin video this week, so apologies, but I really wanted to start this new series and I couldn't start it without basically telling you guys about it. Simple. As always, remember to like, comment, subscribe, all that great stuff, but without further ado, let's get into the video. So the first thing and the most important thing I wanted to talk to you about was the new series that I'd like to start. In the wake of loads of you guys sending me pictures of your cars on Instagram and by email, I thought it'd be worth actually starting a series where I show some of the amazing cars that you guys own. I've seen YouTube channels that show off subscribers' bedrooms and computers and houses and all that kind of stuff. So I thought, why not start a similar kind of series but with subscribers' cars? Loads of you own some really, really cool cars or are doing really cool projects on cars or own amazing classic cars and all that kind of stuff and why not share it with the world? The idea of the video is that I'll talk through five of your cars with a bunch of pictures and videos and whatever, go through the specs, go through the mods that have been done, go through the plans for the future, all that kind of stuff, and ultimately give a little bit of my take on it and any suggestions by me, whether or not you want to listen to them is up to you, but anything that I think is kind of... I don't know, steps for the future for your cars. And then I'll do a little poll each week, maybe in the video, maybe down below. I haven't really worked that bit out yet, but I'll do a little poll. Everyone can vote on their favorite car of the week and then whoever wins will get a nice little prize. Something like, I don't know, the window sticker in the back of my car, if any of you have seen it or something like that, that'll be a little prize for the winner of that poll basically. And yeah, I just thought it'd be a really good way to get you guys more involved in the channel and to also give me an opportunity to see what kind of cars you guys own, basically. If you have any suggestions for the videos, you have any suggestions for the name, which is key because that's topic of the week this week, what should I name this? I've been thinking Car Wars or Build Wars, but if you guys have a better name for a showcasing video of your guys' cars, then please let me know in the comments down below. And yeah, if you have any ideas for this series, I am more than willing to hear them. I'll leave a full explanation of how to enter down below, but the basics are I want at least 10 pictures of the car, preferably in landscape. And if you can, a video as well, or a video or two, maybe exterior and interior, a few videos would be amazing. If you upload them to a Google Drive or some kind of file sharing website that you can share with me, that's amazing. Amazing. I think Google Drive is probably the easiest and most people should have it and it's, it's easy to share on basically. But yeah, put them all on a file sharing site, email the link to the files or the folder or whatever it is to me at info at carswithjb.com, it should be on the screen and down below. Start the subject off with showcase just to make my life a little bit easier in terms of sorting those emails. And in the body of the email, just explain the car to me. So what mods have you done? When did you buy it? How long do you plan on keeping it for? What do you plan on doing next to it? Have you done anything to it? What's special about this car, basically? All the kind of interesting things, put them down in the body of the email so that I can talk about them in the video. So just to quickly recap, minimum 10 landscape photos, preferably a video or two that will help you get onto the videos just because it will look better. Put into a file sharing site, email to info at carswithjb.com, and then in the body of the email, write all about the car. Nice and simple. And then hopefully you'll be able to start getting people into these videos more often and not just do them once a month and do them more often if, if it's something that you guys are interested in. So your feedback is key here, as well as your participation. Because if like one person sends me a picture of their car, then it's not gonna really make for a good video. But yes, hopefully you like that idea and let's talk about the next thing I wanted to talk about. So it's time for the Q&A. As I said, I wanted you guys to give me some questions on Instagram and on YouTube and I've tried to get all of them basically to answer in this video and I'll try and get through them as quickly as possible because I'm pretty long-winded when I talk. So there's a bunch of questions that have been repeated and I'm just going to group those together. The key one of those is what is my new car and also when am I getting a new car? Those are two very fair questions and questions that I don't really have proper answers to so apologies in advance. I really want to get a new car by the end of this year but I'm not sure if that will happen just simply because I don't know where I'm going to be financially by the end of the year and on top of that I also just don't know what car I want and that's the key issue. The key issue is actually that I don't know what car I want. There are a bunch of cars I'm currently looking at. The Porsche Cayman S, the 987 is particularly interesting but I've heard that the Mark 1s are bad in terms of their engines and the Mark 2s are good but the Mark 2s are so much more expensive so that's a difficult one. One of the cars that I absolutely adore and would love to own is the Lotus Elise and funnily enough I found out the other day that my insurance on an Elise would be cheaper 
than insurance on my Polo. I don't know how insurance works. Looking at the E93 3 Series, so whether I go for an M3 or a 335i or a 330i, one of those cars, I'm not really sure, but I really like the look of that car. And if I could have the M3, I absolutely would. And you can get them quite cheap, funnily enough. But uh, I don't know. I'm just not sure, basically. I'm also still looking at a bunch of classic cars as well, and I really, really like classics. So I'm looking at the Lancia Monte Carlo and a bunch of other classics just like that. But I'm actually also looking at some other cars as well for different purposes, and I'll get to that in a second because I've seen that someone's asked a question already. Another question that loads of people have been asking is, is there going to be a car meet or a polo meet or all that kind of stuff? Absolutely, there's going to be a car meet. I want to do one this year over summer. There's hoping for some glorious weather that we can go and chill in our cars and chat to each other and all that kind of stuff. My one problem is that I have no idea how to run a car meet and what the legalities are around it, most importantly. I don't want to get shut down by the police, I don't want to get in trouble, I just want a whole bunch of nice people in a place chatting about their cars and sharing their cars and that kind of stuff. So if anyone knows to run a car meet or has any experience of it or knows the right people to contact, then get in touch with me and we'll sort it out. Another question a bunch of you have asked and what I kind of alluded to in the first question, what's going to be my next project car? So difficult one. One car I've been looking at is the Mark 1 Audi TT. In fact, the 1.8 turbocharged 225 BAM engine. I think that would be such a sick car to use as a little track day car or to just turn into something super, super rapid for the roads. Just it would be fun to work on, I feel. Four-wheel drive, 225 brake horsepower, which you can definitely tune up to even more because that 1.8T engine will really, really go. It's not my favorite looking car, but I think it would be a fun project car, so let me know your thoughts. Or another project car that I've been thinking about is actually my Polo, but for a completely different project. It's a little bit further down the line because it'd be quite expensive and it's a really, really cool idea, but I'm not gonna share it with you right now just because I think it'd be a lot more interesting if I actually decide to do it. I don't wanna promise it now and then never do it. Another question that I've been asked by a bunch of people is have I got any tips for getting cheaper insurance, particularly for younger drivers? I'll make a proper video on this at some point. I actually did a video in the past, which I'll throw on the screen wherever it is, uh, on a bunch of tips that you can employ more generally, but I will make a video on specifically key tips for getting cheaper insurance. It's really hard, basically, for young drivers, but there are little things that you can do to try and get cheaper insurance. Well, let's get to some more of the questions. A Mark 5 Polo GTI facelift or a Mark 7 Golf GTI? I would go for a Mark 7 Golf GTI, probably. Yes, people do generally say the Golf GTI, but I just think it's because they age better over time. The Polo GTIs are kind of cool, and I'm obviously a big Polo fan, but the Golf GTI Mark 7 is actually just a really nice car, so I'd go for that. Thoughts on the Audi A7 for someone who's picking one up this weekend? I like the Audi A7. It's a really, really nice shape, and also the RS7 is one of my favorite Audis, so yeah, a seven is calm. Best grand touring car with good economy. I actually have no idea. I don't actually know off the top of my head, but it would be any of the grand touring cars where you can shot off half the cylinders. So any of those cars where you have that thing that I discussed in my last video actually, where you can basically slice the engine in half and only use half the cylinders for the sake of saving fuel economy on motorways, that's what you want to go for. Have I got any videos planned with other cars? I do. I really want to do more videos like the review I did on my Polo but I need access to the cars and I need time. So as soon as I get both of those things, 100%, plenty more videos to come with other cars of me driving them and testing them out and that kind of stuff. So they'll come soon. Am I planning on putting exhausts on the Polo? If I do an engine swap, yes. If not, no. I don't think I want to put an exhaust system on 1.2. It's just not something that I'm interested in. But I would definitely do it if I got an engine swap in, for sure. Oh, someone asked as well about the project car. What upgrades would I do to it? So I mentioned I'd like to make a track car. I would definitely look at putting on some proper track suspension just i know it'd be super stiff and useless on the roads but it'd be good for track days obviously some obviously thicker tires and wheels obviously i'd quite like to actually widen the car as well so i'd quite like to get just that little bit wider a little bit more squatted to the ground i'd like to strip out a full interior and put in two bucket seats and that would be so sick i'd also like to cage a car i'd like to put a roll cage in a car so those are all things that i want to do in the future is it better for a first car to have less horsepower to tune a bit or a bit older and have more brake horsepower for less tuning i think go for an old car with poor horsepower and just rag it around and have great fun in it. That's my suggestion for getting a first car. But in answer to your question, it depends on what you want. If you want to spend loads of money on tuning, then go for it. But also don't forget that insurance might go up when you tune your car. And if you go for a older car, your insurance will be high anyway. So yeah, maybe it'll balance out, who knows. If I could only do one mod to my car, performance or aesthetic, what would it be? <sighs> That's a really good question and not something I've ever thought about before. Well, tyres are really, really important. You cannot 
understand just how important tyres are. Good tyres are sick on a car. They just change the car so much. But my favourite mod so far on my Polo, if this helps, has been my seats. The seats are so, so nice to sit in. So maybe the seats. If I can get some nice seats in there, then yeah, that'd be ideal. This is one I get quite a lot as well. It says that I'm a passionate car guy, so why don't I have something that shows that I'm a passionate car guy? What I think about owning my Polo as opposed to having something really, really nice is that Anyone who has a car or even doesn't have a car can be a passionate car guy. Your car doesn't necessarily reflect whether or not you are a car guy or you're passionate about cars. And more importantly, I want people to really respect their cars for whatever it is. Lots of us can't afford to have really, really nice cars or expensive cars, and that's just the way that life is, sadly. But it doesn't mean that you can't have a great time and enjoy your car and still be a car guy. So yes, I could probably afford to buy a better car, no flexing, I'm just saying. I could probably afford to, but I don't know if I want to because I want to make sure I make the right purchase for the next car. And also, I'm so happy with my Bolo. Like, it's actually a a good car, I actually quite like it. Any more ideas to complement my car's interior or solely looking at improving its performance? I want to improve the performance a lot more, but that's not to say that I've given up on aesthetics. A whole bunch of the exterior aesthetics are planned to be changed in the future, it's just about getting the time to do them. In terms of the interior, something that I really want to do is completely redo all of the seats and the door cards in a different material, so leather or faux leather or whatever I can get in there, that's a, good, a, a key plan for me over the next little while. So, And yeah, if there's any other interior modifications that people want me to do, suggest them, and if I like the idea of them, I'll do them as well. Why don't I get aftermarket speakers and subwoofers? Well, that follows on very nicely. Maybe I will at some point. It'd be a good video, but my least favorite thing that I've done so far on my car is remove the door cards. It took so long and broke every single tab. So yeah, I'll do it probably at some point, but maybe not a subwoofer. I don't really care that much. I don't. I, I listen to music in my car on long journeys, but I'm not the kind of person that goes on the street with music just blaring out the car because it, it just annoys me. A practical car without breaking the bank. Skoda Fabia Estate every time. My opinion is on the 208E and electric cars in general. So in terms of the 208E, I think it's actually a really sick looking car. I really hope that one day Peugeot can return to making really, really cool hatchbacks because in the past they were so good at it. So even as cars go electric, why can't Peugeot start making some nice cars rather than the really wet ones they've been making for years? In terms of the electric car thing, I actually don't mind electric cars. I really, really, really love the sounds of cars and the sounds of race cars and the sounds of bikes and race motorbikes and all that kind of stuff. But electric cars are sick too. So there are some electric cars I don't like, but there are some internal combustion engine cars I don't like. and There are some hybrids I don't like, so I don't really care. I would probably own an electric car at some point in my life, but I mostly like electric cars for the sake of the speed and how quick they are. Like when you get a proper sick supercar with electric power, it's gonna absolutely go. Opinions on the new McLaren GT? It's a, it's a hard one. I'll probably make a video about this kind of stuff at some point. I might not, who knows. But either way, McLaren GT, it's a nice looking car, but I would never have one if I had the money. If I was gonna look for a Grand Tour, I wouldn't get it from McLaren. It's like, I go to McLaren because I wanna get something that is unbelievably good for the track. That is just the reason why I go to McLaren. I don't go to McLaren for a Grand Tour, that's just not what I think in my head. To draw a parallel, it's like, I love my Windows PC and I use it all the time for gaming and making videos and that kind of stuff, but I wouldn't go to Windows for a phone. I'd go to Apple for a phone or I'd go maybe for an Android phone. And I know that Windows phones are really good and people like them and whatever, but I just, in my head, I go Apple or I go Android or whatever. I don't, in my head, think oh, I'll get a Windows phone. I don't know, maybe I'm just wrong, but that's just the kind of thing in my head. I love, I think it's a great looking car, but it's just not for me, maybe. Opinions on the BMW M8, sick. It's just a really good looking car. Does Jaguar make the best V6 sounding engine? They make one of the best V6 sounding engines in the F-Type, absolutely. But I think that the Alfa Romeo GT V6 is one of the best sounding V6s. If you haven't heard it, go have a listen, it sounds great. What's the average price people spend on their first car? I have absolutely no idea. I spent 400 on my first car. My friend spent about 800 on his. So I assume under a grand for the majority of people, but then a bunch of people spend more than that. So who knows? What's my opinion on minis? Love the old ones. The new ones are great cars, but I'm a little bit in two minds about the badge. Simple. Oh, and also the first ones had really awful engines from what I understand, like they used to just go all the time. But my girlfriend's got one and it's a 1.4 and it's really, really nice and just luxurious inside. If you can get one of the first car, I would highly recommend, not the first ones, but the ones beyond that. Speaking of Mini, someone's got an R53 GP. Would I like to drive their car? Absolutely, yes. 
hit me up on Instagram or on whatever and I'll 100% come and test out your car. There we go, review video already in the making. Put more pictures up with Penny. My Instagram needs to be used more. I just don't post enough. I only use it really for letting you guys know when videos are coming out. I'm just too lazy and I'm sorry for that and I will do better or at least I'll try to do better. Would like to come visit Italy to visit Italian fans. I didn't realize I had any Italian fans so thanks for supporting all the way from Italy and yes I, I actually have family living in Italy so I'll probably go and visit them at some point and if I do I'll let people know that I'm there and come and say hello. Favourite convertible for under £15,000? BMW M3 E93. Great car. And it does go for under 15 grand. It will be a ropey old one but it will go for under 15 grand. Greatest car from the Fast and Furious. For me it's got to be Brian O'Connor's Nissan Skyline GTR. I think it was an R34 from Too Fast Too Furious. That was, yeah, just such a sick car. Where do I see myself with YouTube in a year? I'm not really sure. I haven't really thought about it. I just want to keep making good videos for you guys to enjoy basically and making videos that I like making. In a year's time I hope to have between 30 and 50,000 subscribers which is a massive massive target but Hopefully it's achievable and if you guys continue to support the channel as well as you've been supporting it then hopefully we can reach that and I just yeah I think that's where I want to be. But yes I absolutely love doing YouTube and I love making videos and chatting to you guys and that kind of stuff so I'll 100% still be banging out videos weekly all this great stuff. I want to do more than one video a week but it's just hard. Life is very busy. Ooh, so. Talk about hyped cars that flopped in the market and why. The Brabus Roadster, it was such hype. It went into Top Gear in fifth gear and on Top Gear they had the special one, like the V6 one, which would have been pretty sick. But on fifth gear they had the proper one, so the one with the generally poor gearbox that you have to basically use almost like a manual gearbox. It's just really, really annoying and really clunky and it's not really well made. So that is a car in particular that I think had a lot of hype around it because it was actually a really cool car, getting a Brabus for a quite cheap price. And it does look cool and I'm a big fan of the Brabus Roadster, but that gearbox just killed it. The engine was great and they were just like, oh gosh, we're really struggling for money and we just want to get this car out. Let's just Friday afternoon decision, chuck a really bad gearbox in it and it just ruined the car. And then AC came along to try and buy the Roadster and they did and they were going to make this thing called the AC Ace which is going to look so, so sick. And then that just folded from out of nowhere and that was going to be a manual. It, it baffles me because that would have been so cool. When am I going to fit a lorry turbo to the Polo soon? Which do I prefer making pointless Polo project videos or the top five series and why? I probably prefer making the Polo videos but only just because I really really like making the top five videos too. The top five videos usually take me a really long time to make and usually have a lot of research gone into them but the polo videos I feel like it's really helped me to feel a lot more comfortable talking on camera and it also just makes my car better so that's pretty cool. But I think my favorite two videos I've ever made, one I really liked my review video, I know it's just like a silly video with some silly stuff in it but I just liked making it, it was kind of fun. And the other one that I made that I always think about was the top five icons from the 2000s, so the supercar icons. It's an old video so you might not have seen it but I just put a lot of time and effort into that video and I thought it was quite good so feel free to go and watch it because I didn't get that much love. And which would I recommend more, the Alpha Mito or the 2006 Mini Cooper S? I'd probably go for the Cooper S but I have a friend with the Mito and it's a really nice car funny enough and the interior is super super lush so it depends on whether you want something that's a little bit quicker and sounds better or something that's a bit nicer inside and yeah, I'd say they offer the nicer of the two in that sense. Right, on to the YouTube questions. What's my favorite hatchback? A uh, difficult question, depending whether you're talking about old or new, but in terms of new hatchbacks, I really like the A45 AMG. I think I could definitely see myself owning one of those. It's a shame that they don't come in manuals. I know that I bang on about manuals all the time, but they're out of my price range probably, but they, they're pretty cool. In terms of classics, 100% the Renault 5 Turbo 2. What is my dream car? The Enzo Ferrari. Uh, it's just my poster car from when I was a child and I've seen them in person quite a lot over the last year and for the first time ever I saw one actually driving on the public roads when I was driving to Surrey with my girlfriend. I literally had to pull over to the side of the road to just stare in awe as it came past me. My girlfriend looked at me like I was some complete waste man but honestly the, the thing is just beautiful. My favourite country for cars, probably Germany. They just bang out such good cars from so many different manufacturers. It's probably the best country. Best country for driving in though. I really enjoy driving in Switzerland, it's just it's such a beautiful country. The roads are, are very nice, but it's so beautiful. What was the first thing I did when I passed my driving test? It was get driven back home by a driving instructor, because obviously you're not allowed to drive anymore at that point. And then it was spend an entire month just bugging my parents about cars and insurance basically, like 
how can I get my insurance paid for? Can you guys help me please? Because there's no way I can pay for my insurance, all that kind of stuff. So it was about a month between passing my test and actually getting my Skoda. But once I got my Skoda, oh my gosh, was I gassed. When's the next polo video? Hopefully soon. I'm hoping next week. It just depends on whether I got time to do it over the weekend. 22 inch rims, good for suspension. Depends on the car. If you've got a really big car, 22 inches will be fine. If I put 22 inches on my polo, it might not work so well. Advice on the course of VXR. It's loud. Might attract attention from police. I would say it's probably not an ideal first car as you've asked. Instead, go for something a little bit older and a little bit more easy for you to run around and ruin, basically. But it's not a bad car. There's a guy down my road that owns one and it's just, it is a nice looking car. And it does sound really good as well. So yeah, it's a great car, but not maybe not an ideal first car. Okay, cool. I think that is all the questions. So that took me forever to get through and I'm gonna have to edit all of that down because that was way too much. Finally, let's talk about my little giveaway. So if you own a VW Polo 9N or 9N3 and it's a five door, has to be a five door, then I accidentally bought these ages ago. When I say ages ago, I mean I bought these in September last year. So if you don't know what these are, you probably can't see them. Let me stand a little bit further back. See those? Yeah, good. So these are wind deflectors from Heco, Heco, the ones that everyone has basically. And I was gonna get some for my polo in a moment of madness. I just bought them on eBay, wasn't really thinking. Realized when they arrived that I just had the fronts for a five door and I have a three door. And also I realized that I don't want wind deflectors on my car. So it was just a bad purchase all around really. So if you have one of the cars that fits this, a 9N3 or a 9N, go onto Instagram, at carswithjb, follow me, DM me a picture of your polo 9N, 9N3 preferably with your face in it so that I know for certain that it's yours and I'm not just sending a bunch of these to some random person who doesn't have a Polo 9 or a 9 and 3 and then I will put all the names into one of those randomizers online and one person will get chosen from random and they will get these. Nice and simple. I just basically want to get rid of them and one of you guys can have them if you want them. I'll announce the winner on the community tab or something like that, or maybe in a video. I'll just let people know who won so that you know that I actually gave them away. But yes, other than that, not much more to say. I'm sorry if the video dragged on for a bit. I don't know if it did or not because I haven't edited the video yet. But when I have edited the video, you'll know whether it dragged on or not. Don't forget the topic of the week. I really want to help with the name for this series. And please, please, please give me any feedback down below on what you want to see in those videos and how they should be structured and that kind of stuff. As always, remember to like, comment, subscribe, all that great stuff. Share it with your friends, particularly if you've got friends who might have cars that should go into that new series. But as always, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.